Hello, and welcome to Thumb Winds End of the Road in Michigan podcast. Each week, we select one of our amazing stories about the Great Lakes region and the tip of Michigan's thumb. These are taken from thumbwind.com and presented here so that you can listen to it anytime, anywhere. Today's story is about the dark days of Michigan Prohibition and how Michigan's thumb was a smuggling hub by the infamous Purple Gang. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's tale from the end of the road. The Legend of Whiskey Harbor and the Purple Gang During Michigan Prohibition On the eastern edge of Michigan's thumb lies a lonely, wild and rocky cove on the shore of Lake Huron. The remote area sits on a layer of limestone that makes it hard to build on, so it remains undeveloped. It's hard to imagine that this beautiful remote setting was the site for major organized crime and smuggling activity during the era of Michigan Prohibition for over 16 years. The Dry Times, The History of Michigan Prohibition Efforts started in 1852 by Michigan Church, business, and community leaders to ban the sale of alcohol. It was thought that such temperance would reduce crime, improve family life, and increase employee productivity. Their efforts succeeded in 1916 when the citizens of Michigan approved a prohibition amendment to the state constitution. As soon as the law took effect in May 1917, bootlegging operations and smuggling networks from Canada into Michigan formed. Organized crime gangs step in for a thirsty Michigan. With the supply of liquor gone, bootleggers turned to Canada, which had favorable liquor laws. The notorious Purple and Sugar House gangs began trafficking bootlegged liquor from Canada and into Michigan via the Detroit River, Lake St. Clair, and even the shoreline of the Thumb. In the winter, smugglers drove across sections of the Detroit River or skated across the ice, dragging sleds full of booze. The Origin of the Purple Gang in Detroit The Purple Gang and the Oakland Sugar House Gang emerged in Detroit almost simultaneously. The boys grew up in a neighborhood known as Paradise Valley in Detroit's Lower East Side, and most of them went to Bishop's School. There they began hanging together and coordinated in petty crimes such as shoplifting and burglary from local Jewish merchants. Once they graduated from school the two groups joined forces distilling liquor at the Oakland Sugar House located on Oakland Street. The gang was really a loose confederation, hiring themselves out to different syndicate crime organizations. However, they established the entire southeast Michigan region as their territory for smuggling booze from Canada. Their favorite merchandise was a Canadian whiskey called Old Log Cabin which was in demand by Al Capone in Chicago. The Isolated and Remote Shore of Whiskey Harbor The area now denoted as Whiskey Harbor is a picturesque rocky shoreline with mudflats and low-lying marshy areas inland. It was owned by the Kernan family since 1902 and thought to be used primarily for cattle grazing. Local lore tells that this isolated spot had been the rendezvous point for whiskey smuggling since the 1890s. So it's no surprise that during Prohibition that the spot was the drop-off point for good Canadian whiskey brought over from Ontario. It was thought that there was dredging done to allow fast-moving speedboats to drop their cargo right onshore. Whiskey Harbor was one of the southeast Michigan locations that accounted for an estimated 75% of all the alcohol smuggled into the United States during Prohibition. By 1929 booze running was Detroit's second largest industry, netting $215 million per year. The Harbor Beach Times featured a note about Whiskey Harbor in 1940. The article was about the new M25 Scenic Highway. The newspaper said that barrels of whiskey were lost in the harbor during the smuggling era in the 1920s. In 1933, Congress passed a resolution proposing a 21st Amendment to the Constitution that would repeal the 18th. It was ratified by the end of 1933, ending the Prohibition era. Whiskey Harbor in Michigan's Thumb Today The Kernan family has preserved 45 acres of this beautiful shore. In 1989, the family donated the land and harbor to the Michigan Nature Association. You can visit the harbor and take a walk on a trail that leads to a remote beach area. Whiskey Harbor is a prime spot to watch for migrating birds and see an area that has remained basically untouched since the 1880s. Visiting Whiskey Harbor If you want to visit this remote and wild bit of undeveloped Lake Huron shoreline there is a marked trail. Wear boots and expect to get a bit muddy as the preserve in a low-lying area. 
If you can't go to this remote spot, or don't want to, visit thumbwind.com and do a search for Whiskey Harbor. You will see pictures, maps and more detail on this bit of wild preserve on the shore of Lake Huron. This concludes this week's story. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Thumb Wind's End of the Road podcast. If you like this kind of story, you are invited to subscribe to our podcast. Just search for The End of the Road in Michigan from wherever you're listening from. Please watch for and download next week's story and take a moment to give us a review. Have a great day.